Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Regular viewers will know I review many photographic, audio and video related products and podcasting products such as microphones, sound mixers, audio interfaces and that kind of thing. But today we're taking a look at a new camera released by Sony. Now there's already hundreds of reviews online about this particular camera. It's generated a lot of interest and a lot of excitement uh, on the internet uh, and hopefully it will generate that sort of excitement uh, in people's wallets that go out and buy it, you know, um, who knows. But what we're looking at today is the Sony ZV-1 or uh, ZV-1, who knows, I call it the ZV-1 um, and here it is. It's a little compact one inch sensor camera designed along the lines of the RX100 range, particularly the 6 and the 7, the RX100 6, RX107. Um, it has the lens though from the RX105, which is the 24 to 70 f1.8 lens. Um, it's not a constant f1.8, it drops down to, I think it's about f4, uh, and it's, uh, well, it's actually, let's have a look. I think it's f4 or f2.8 maybe. Um, let's have a look. So you've got, um, uh, well, I'll go through the features in just a second, but let's see what it does drop down to. Yeah, f2.8 actually, so it's a 1.8 to 2.8. So it's still really wide, and it's, well, pretty wide, at its telephoto end. So um, ideal, absolutely superb. I've had this camera three, three days now, and I'm really enjoying using it. I haven't really found anything terribly frustrating about it. Um, Although I did know most of its features when I bought it. And there's a few that I was really excited about once I got it. So as for ZV-1, uh, 24 to 70 uh, uh, lens, uh, fixed lens, obviously. In a sense, you can't interchange it. It's not a fixed focal, uh, fixed focal length. It's a fixed lens. You can't change the lens. Um, new to Sony, though, unlike the RX100s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. God. Um, they've either got flip up or flip down screens or no flip screen. They've actually put an articulating screen on this one, which is awesome. It turns on as you, um, you know, uh, uh, remove the screen from the back of a camera. So um, great design that, isn't it? So you can fold it back that way, fold it back on itself um, and use it like a traditional compact camera. You know, absolutely great that they put an articulating screen on because they're calling this the vlogging camera, the perfect vlogging camera. Reviewers seem to be suggesting it isn't the perfect vlogging camera, but it's a great vlogging camera. So, um, as I say, it's got this articulating screen, so when you are filming yourself, uh, you just turn the screen down, very much like we do on the Canons and the Panasonics. So this isn't a new idea, but it's new to Sony. So, um, you know, I love it. You know, the interesting thing is, although I love it, the interesting thing is, Sony have been doing this for many years on their camcorders. Um, I've got a Panasonic PXWX70. That's got the flip-out screen. Um, and many, many of the other camcorders, the NX5 and what have you, uh, even the Pro one. So it's really odd it's taken them so long to develop that with their compact range and their, uh, hopefully they'll do it with their DSLRs um, and their mirrorless cameras, not the DSLRs, their mirrorless cameras. Um, so that's basically the screen, um, not a touch screen. It is touch to focus, but it isn't touch. You know, you can't touch it for them to get to the menus and all that kind of thing. It's a nice design, you know, it is a really, really nice design. That's a really mighty tight close up. Um, yeah, really, really nice design that, and I, uh, I like it. it's nice and comfortable. Um, the the controls are easy to get to. Um, so for video and vlogging, yeah, it's it's absolutely wonderful. Um, now, we talk about the vlogging because obviously that's what uh, everyone is talking about with this particular camera. Um, and yeah, it's got a flip out screen. It's got a mic jack, which is outstanding. Uh, Sony have now introduced a camera. I know the RX107's got a mic jack, but they've now put a mic jack on the side of this camera, uh, just on the just in the side there, um, along with obviously HDMI out and uh, USB. Um, so, you know, those three ports are just on the side of the camera. But what's nice, it's on the other side to where the screen comes out. So unlike the Panasonics, when you plug a mic or particularly headphones into the Panasonics, it blocks, well, the cable blocks the view of the screen. They've done that really well here. So there's no blocking, there's no view blocking. So that's great. Um, 
and you'll see some clips of me vlogging uh, in just a moment. Uh, it comes also with this little uh, furry, um, well, it's a wind muff, uh, dead cat, some people would call them. I mean, France it doesn't like them being called dead cats, but there you go. Um, a little uh, furry thing that slots into this hot shoe because there's no viewfinder on this camera, which might upset a few people that do take photographs. It's not going to make much odds for video. But again, it's a compact camera. You know, people are used with mobile phones not having a viewfinder. So I think that's what Sony have gone down that sort of route. But that just clips straight onto there and you've got a nice furry muff to protect the wind from uh, the microphone. And we'll go outdoors and I'll show you some clips, you know, what that's like. So, you know, that's a nice little touch, a nice feature. So I'm just testing the uh, vlogging capabilities of this camera. I'm using the built-in microphone uh, on the camera, but I've got the wind muff, the dead cat, whatever you want to call it, uh, on the microphone to help uh, reduce uh, wind noise. Um, obviously, I can't hear the audio, but I can see the I can see the audio, so that's a real help. Um, it's got manual audio control. Uh, and I've uh, pre-assigned a, a function button to be able to set the manual audio settings. Very quick and easy, very happy with that, it's not a problem at all. So, uh, and also having the articulating screen is really helpful. I'm actually using my little hand grip uh, to hold the camera, rather than holding the camera, I find that really helpful. And I've got it on steady, on standard uh, steady shot. So I'm not, I haven't switched on active steady shot yet. I've got it on standard, uh, just again to see how good that is. And I've got the built-in ND filter switched to on. Uh, and this really bright sunshine, that's really, uh, really very necessary. So um, I've got the ND switched to on. So basically I've got manual audio control. Uh, I've got the ND turned on and it's on steady uh, steady cam, standard steady cam, that's what I'm looking for, uh, using the internal microphone. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the Rode Wireless Go in a moment and I'll also put on the active steady cam, it will crop it a bit tighter. Um, one of the criticisms with this camera has been the 24mm wide angle lens. I don't think that's too bad. I really don't. I think I can manage manage with that quite happily. Using steady, uh, I keep saying steady, standard steady shot. Um, I think it might be a bit too tight with active steady shot, but um, we just have to wait and see on that. Uh, but at the moment, yeah, as I say, the 24 mil in this mode is fine. So uh, yeah, no problem with that. It could do it being a bit wider, I guess, but um, it is what it is. Um, so there we go. I've now switched active steady shot on, so it's cropped it in quite a bit tighter. It's still manageable, but it's just that bit tighter. Uh, and I've got my Rode Wireless Go on, so the sound quality, in theory, should be quite a bit better. Um, we'll have to play it back on the computer and see. But it gives you an indication how good this camera is and how great that it has got an external microphone jack to be able to plug in an external microphone such as the Rode Wireless Go or a little gun mic or whatever. So um, as I say with active steady shot on now um, it has cropped it quite a bit tighter although I don't think that's quite good. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I don't know how steady it's keeping it. I haven't got the steadiest of hands um, but judge for yourself and judge for yourself for the image quality I still got the ND filter turned on because that's essential under bright light like this. Um, and it's great that it's got the red tally light so I can actually see that it is recording. Uh, that's a great, a great feature of this particular camera. One of my favourite features of this little camera is the red tally light. So um, yeah, that's the active steady shot um, with the ND filter turned on and using my Rode Wireless Go. So there you go. The autofocus is phenomenal on this camera. And they're quite right, the eye autofocus is fantastic. It's really, really good. And it just locks on your eye in video as well as in stills. Um, so yeah, that is awesome. And the lens quality is awesome for this particular camera. It shoots 4K, uh, which I love. Obviously it does 1080p, does slow motion, shoots 4K, um, which is awesome. There's no record limit either, which is fantastic. So you can just keep on going apparently until it either overheats 
or the battery runs out. I've not had any problems with it overheating, doing, you know, little clips here and there, been playing with it, but um, yeah, no, great, great little feature. Um, so as far as a video camera is concerned, isn't it a fantastic little compact video camera? Um, you know, I think it's, you know, awesome. And again, Sony have taken the design from the RX100 range and have integrated it into the Z range. I expect there'll be more models coming along uh, in the ZV range, probably ZV2, ZV3, whatever, I don't know. Um, but um, on the top plate, they've also uh, fitted, I say fitted, is that the right word? I don't know. As well as a three capsule microphone on the top here, it's got a very large uh, video record button on the top, which is great. Uh, obviously a stills button. Um, and there's a few other function buttons, which I'll um, quickly go through. Um, mode button, because there isn't a mode dial for uh, setting up, you know, your shutter priority, um, aperture priority for photographs, video, and what have you. But what you do, which I think is absolutely fine. I don't personally don't have an issue with it at all. So um, you've got your uh, screen open. So you click on your mode button and then comes up uh, on the side here, your um, various modes, film, absolute priority, shutter priority and what have you. And you just literally turn the dial, as you can see there, and that's just scrolling through your different modes. And that's how you select your mode. So it's the same as having a mode button, but it's menu as opposed to, um, you know, a, a physical button. So there we go. That don't bother me in the slightest. Um, so you set that up like that. Uh, but in addition with video, let's, let's get back to video again. I'm doing a lot to do with video because it is a, it is predominantly a video camera um, that takes takes very, very good stills. So um, let's just get back to video mode. So let's go into mode and choose uh, intelligent auto, we don't want that. We want video. Um, when, when you are selecting video, you can select whether you want after priority, shutter priority, program, whatever. I always select shutter priority, that way you can get 1 50th of a second shutter speed, which is, you know, absolutely awesome. Uh, certainly here in the UK. So you select that and then you just scroll the the wheel on the back here is what adjusts the settings. Um, so if you was in aperture priority, that would change the aperture. Shutter priority change, changes the shutter speed. Um, all fine and dandy, straightforward enough. Um, and you've got your audio record level is on there as well, which I think is another fantastic feature. It's clear to see um, and works a treat. No problem with that at all, so happy with that. Um, hasn't got a headphone jack, so you can't monitor the audio, um, but as typical of these small cameras. At least it has got a mic jack. Um, talking about mic jacks, you can also plug in a Sony um, microphone without having to use a mic lead. And it uses these multi-interface shoes. So this multi-interface shoe, which is the hot shoe on the top here, um, has got pins and contacts on it for a microphone, be it a gun mic, a radio mic, wireless mic, and what have you. One feature of it is great. And I wish every camera had this. I wish my Nikons had it, the Fujis have it, but my Nikon Z6s don't have it. And I'm frustrated now because my monitor has gone off from one of my Z6s, but I don't know if it's still recording. Um, I'm hoping it is, um, and I'm gonna work on the assumption that it is still you know, recording. But with the Sony, you would know whether it is, because as soon as I hit the record button on here, you get a really bright red tally light comes up on the front of the, um, uh, lens, but well, by the lens, next to the lens, you can actually see that it's recording. And that is great when you're filming yourself. You're not going to miss takes because it's clear as anything that it is recording. So that's a great little feature. Um, built in ND filters uh, for video and for stills. Uh, great again if you want to get that lovely depth of field. You can't get a tremendous depth of field because it's a one inch sensor camera, but you can get it and it's, and it's great. Um, but there's two features that Sony have implemented on this camera. One of them I thought was a gimmick, but isn't a gimmick. And one of them I absolutely love and I knew it wouldn't be a gimmick. Um, and the two features are, one of them they call a bokeh, a bokeh mode, bokeh depth of, depth of focus, whatever. But basically, you, uh, if you're in a shutter priority or aperture priority, 
You push the button, and I think I've got it assigned. I think I've assigned, kept it assigned to a one run. Let's go into uh, photography. Let's go into shutter priority, and you hit the button. Yeah, I have kept it assigned. So um, on the top here, there is a button that puts you into this depth from defocal, so depth of focus, or not from depth of defocus, that's Panasonic. But basically what it does, it sets the aperture to f1.8, regardless of where it is, it might be set at f5.6, whatever, you push that, and that will automatically set it to f1.8 to give you the widest aperture to get your background out of focus. And oh, it's brilliant. So uh, even if you're in shutter priority, that will take the aperture down to f1.8 and adjust the shutter accordingly. Uh, and you just do that. And on the back of the screen here, you get a, a, you know, a message to say that's what you've done. So it says clear or um, a defocus mode or whatever. Um, absolutely fantastic and i love that it's a nice little feature and it works really really well um so that's one of them but the other feature that i think is uh, excellent let's just get rid of that so that's gone the other feature that is absolutely phenomenal is what we call a showcase mode and that is great for filming it's great for youtubers so you're setting your camera up you're doing yourself so you're talking to uh, the camera like i'm exactly what i'm doing here talking to the camera and you want to show a product now i've got a third camera set up purely for showing uh, product shots so i've got my little canon m6 that's showing it here but you can go in with this camera you can go into what we call showcase mode i've got this preset to a function button so on here You've got your function buttons and I'm going to try and do this upside down um, and I'm sure this isn't going to work me doing this like this but you go to your function buttons and you've got a uh, showcase mode there um, at the moment it's set to off Ooh, where are we it's set to off you push that and you set it to on set that to on and then when you're filming yourself and then you want to showcase the product, hence the reason they call it showcase mode, you hold it up to the camera, bada bing, there you go, snap straight into focus. You'll see some samples here, I'll, I'll put up on the video some samples of me doing that. Great for YouTubers, isn't it? Absolutely phenomenal. I think they'll buy that, or they'll buy this camera purely for that one feature. Um, awesome. Um, so there we go. Now stills, very, very few YouTubers are talking about stills with this camera. It is a stills camera. It takes as good a stills as what the RX100 range does. Um, the RX100 7 particularly. The focus, the autofocus is phenomenal. The burst rate is great. And I put some stills, some sample stills on my Flickr page. Now, I can't edit the RAW files at the moment because Lightroom doesn't support the RAW files. ON1 does, but they're really muddy and pretty horrible. And uh, Luminar 4 does as well. But again, they're not great. But the JPEGs that are coming out of this camera are fantastic. So I'm really, really happy with the JPEGs. So the JPEGs that you see on Flickr are basically straight out of the camera. I haven't post-processed them um, or anything of that nature. So uh, take a look at them. I'll put a, dis a description, uh, a description, a link to my Flickr page in the description. So it's a great stills camera. It's got aperture priority, shutter priority, uh, programmed automatic, intelligent auto, all the things you would expect to find. But all you've got to do, rather than having a mode dial, as I said earlier, you literally just hit the mode button and you get into the uh, uh, photographic mode that you want by hitting that button. Um, it hasn't got the manual controls that the other cameras have. The RX100 has. Um, but if you're in aperture priority, um, all you do is just turn this dial of the back here to adjust your apertures. Same if you're in shutter priority, just turn that dial to adjust your shutter speeds. Not an issue. Um, so uh, I think it's, I'm going to be doing another video on the photographic side, but I'll be doing another video on the video side of this camera. Um, so that's that. Now, Batteries has been another criticism. It takes the same battery, uh, this is a third party one, but the same battery as the uh, um, uh, RX100 range or BX1. And it's fine, you know. Yeah, the life of it is limited, um, but that doesn't really bother me. These are so tiny to shove in your pocket. But the other thing is, if you do need more power, get yourself a battery grip, which I haven't got to hand. I thought, oh, here we go. 
Ah, got one here. Get yourself a battery grip a bit like this one here. This is a Jobo one that I bought for something else. Don't know what I bought it for. Um, but it's got a battery in this grip. Uh, it's ah, from your GoPro. Um, and you just use the USB lead that plugs into here and plug it into the side because you can do USB charging uh, and powering uh, with this camera. So, you know, if you're going out and about, just screw this on you know, or a, any grip that has got a battery in it, or find a battery you can put on the top, you know, um, and there you go. You'll have battery life forever and a day, but that, that lasts forever, uh, running a, an external battery into the camera, um, or put a couple of little batteries in your pocket, you know. Uh, so that, again, a feature that doesn't bother me that it's using the same battery. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, the other thing that I really dig is that a number of reviewers are complaining, well, complaining is too strong a word, criticising the fact that it hasn't got USB-C. I'm really glad that it hasn't. <laughs> they retained the old sort of backward compatible, is it USB mini, USB micro? I don't know what they call it. Um, and that's great because I've got one of these uh, original Sony uh, grips that I bought for an RX100 a long time ago. Again, that fits into there, screws into there, no problem. But the USB connections is exactly the same connection. So that fits in there beautifully, you know, um, he says it does, because I've been using it. So that'll fit in there nicely like that. That's great. And I haven't screwed it on, let's screw it on. Heck, let's do it, let's do it. So, you know, once you've got that screwed on, he says, like so, and you turn it on. When I, mean, I want to take a photograph, because it's around the wrong way, really, and I, you might not hear that, but it's taking the photograph fine. Or it would be taking video fine, you know. See that? No problem. So if you have got old kit knocking around, or you might be able to pick up one of these grips much cheaper. What I'm saying is it's backward compatible. I'm delighted, absolutely delighted about that. I haven't got to spend 100 odd quid on a grip that is much bigger and much bulkier because it's got the um, uh, blue um, Bluetooth infrared remote thing with it, not infrared, Bluetooth remote with it. Um, so yeah, that is basically the um, uh, Sony ZV-1. The other thing is, um, I think I said earlier, no record limit for video. It will keep on going until it either overheats, which I've not had, um, or the battery runs flat. But it won't run flat if you're using, you know, a, a, a device like this. And what else have we got here? Um, yeah, that's about it. That's an introduction to the Sony ZV-1. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there will be a podcast with regarding the Sony ZV-1 on my podcast channel. Uh, again, description and the link below. So, uh, and subscribe to this uh, channel if you want to see more videos relating to the Sony ZV-1 and many other cameras and audio equipment and technology and what have you. So, Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And like this button, like this button? Hit the like button for this video if you like the content of this video. Thanks very much. See you again soon. Bye for now.